Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Journalist Toolbox training. I'm Mike Riley, your trainer once again. Uh, I'm the founder and editor of the website journalisttoolbox.ai. And before we get started with our tool, two tools today, LensGo uh, and Latte Social, I wanted to remind you about journalisttoolbox.ai website. Um, this is a free website that has uh, links to hundreds of AI tools uh, that are useful for journalists. You can go in and open up this page, for instance, which has a lot of tools for video creation and editing um, that are AI driven. Um, I've flagged in here many of them that are uh, paid, uh, others that are free. Uh, I also have training videos that are built into here as well. Uh, you're watching one of those training videos right now on our YouTube training video channel. Training videos can be accessed right here off the right hand rail of the page. Uh, and when you go there, uh, we've got over a hundred of them um, and they're all free uh, once again. And you can uh, open them up and uh, play through them. We've got AI tools. Uh, we've got many other uh, useful tools for journalists. Uh, uh, how to edit video on your phone. How to create a uh, you know COVID nineteen dashboard with uh, uh, with uh, Tableau Public. Uh, all kinds of different tools in here, and it's all free. Uh, for those of you who are college instructors, uh, this is, makes for really good homework because many of these uh, training videos have exercises built into them. Uh, so you can have the students do the work uh, at home. Um, uh, beyond the YouTube channel, we also have uh, a uh, newsletter that comes out every other Tuesday on Substack, comes out in the morning around 8 a.m. Central Time. Uh, and uh, we have all kinds of tips and tools and tricks in here that kind of fill in uh, what you don't get in the training videos and in the uh, uh, in a, out of the website. Uh, many of them have training videos too built into it. Uh, all kinds of tools, tri tips, tricks, and announcements. So uh, take advantage of this website. It's uh, fantastic. And like I say, it's uh, priced right. Uh, it is free. Um, so we're going to jump into the training now. Uh, and that's this handout here. Uh, so you might want to uh, pause your video here and open up this link, bit.ly bit.ly slash lensgo training. Okay, that's our focus today is the lensgo app. Okay. And then also set up free accounts on Lensgo uh, and Latte Social and op have those open. Uh, you can also open up uh, Video Poet, which is on uh, Google. At the time I'm recording this video, um, Lens uh, Video Poet isn't available uh, as a uh, hands on tool. It does have examples of what they're doing with it, what Google Research is doing with it. But I'm going to talk about it a little bit at the end of the video. So have all three of these open and have accounts set up on Lensgo, uh, lensgo.ai, and latte social, latte.social. Um, so go ahead and hit pause and get those set up as well as open up this uh, handout. All right, welcome back. Uh, you should have your uh, handout here open, LensGo training, uh, and also the LensGo.ai site uh, and the Latte Social site and have uh, free accounts set up on those. Uh, you can upgrade these accounts too. Uh, that uh, plans, you know, are pretty modest, about $6 monthly on LensGo. Latte Social is a little bit more, uh, but they're, you know, two pretty good uh, uh, tools uh, as far as pricing and the free versions uh, give you enough tokens that you can at least get a few things done with it. Um, Lensgo allows you to animate uh, videos and create images. Uh, uh, it's a tool from Stability AI. Uh, it's really helpful for, you know, maybe somebody designing a magazine cover or, uh, uh, you know, needs to have some type of animation on it, or you've got a, a video package and you want to convert it into Pixar type characters, things like that. And I've had kind of some mixed success with that. And I'll show you some examples of that in a minute. Um, uh, I've given you some prompts down here that we can work with. Um, just a couple of fun ones uh, that we can do with images in, in uh, Lensgo. Um, the real power of this tool is this little uh, toolbar on the left-hand side that allows you to change the different formats. I've got this one set to uh, uh, Pixar style. Uh, you, so you can take an image and convert it to Pixar. Uh, and then also the dimensions, which is really nice. It's got all the different aspect ratios here, 16, 9, 4 to 3, 3 to 2. And then you can pick the number of images that you want it to generate. Uh, you can do, you know, 1 to 4 or anywhere in there. I usually pick around 2 or 3. Um, Latte Social, the other tool we're going to get into here in a minute, uh, that goes for a little over $11 a month. Um, uh, there you can do, you know, uh, text to video. Uh, type uh, work. Um, you can generate all kinds of visuals. You can add music uh, and realistic voices to it as well. 
Um, and I've given you a sample prompt here to work with as well. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, we've got the video poet down here. Uh, you know, Google's experimenting with text to video and image to video uh, editing tool. They'll do many things, painting and uh, other things as well. I'll show that to you in a little bit. It doesn't, uh, you know, have a uh, uh, an in right now for going in and, and creating these images ourselves. They're experimenting with it. It's it's in like a an alpha or a beta uh, where they're doing uh, a lot of work internally with it, but they're showing some of the work that it produces, which is is pretty interesting. You know, it's fun to see all these different tools develop. So let's jump in out of LensGo. Um, so open up LensGo. Uh, and uh, I'm going to grab a, a, one of the uh, prompts here. I will just start with astronaut on Mars during sunset. And uh, uh, you can copy these as well uh, and use them, or you can write your own. Um, I'm just starting with a little simple prompt. Uh, you can add details as you go, um, uh, but uh, this is the, the main page for it. It, it lists all the tools out here. Uh, you know, If you're watching this video a few months from now, I'm recording this in late 2023, uh, you know, you may have some additional tools out here as well. Um, you can train these models, which is really great. You can upload, you know, 15, 20 photos uh, and train it to have consistent characters. Uh, that's a very popular uh, thing right now is to have consistent characters in the uh, development of your images. Because if you use Midjourney or some of those tools and you don't train it to, to look a, a certain way, you know, have this character look a certain way, it's going to give you a different result each time. But you can load images in of someone or, you know, a different character uh, and train this model to produce the same type of character every single time. Um, you can animate videos. You can pull in a video maybe of yourself doing something uh, and convert it into Pixar or, you know, uh, uh, some other type of illustration, um, you know, ink painting style, you know, fantasy scenes. You see some of them down here, some of these examples, which are really cool. Um, you can go in and actually click on these and, and, and create off of them, which is uh, uh, quite nice. Uh, or you can go here you know, and, and just hit create images. You also have the tools up here uh, uh, in the upper left-hand corner where you can set up your training models, animate a video, or animate an image. So uh, I'm going to create an image and just click here. Uh, and it'll show you the ones you've created in the past. It's a little bit like mid-journey where it shows, uh, you know, this is one I did of a car. I uh, uploaded a picture of a car and asked it to change the color of the car. Uh, and, and show it, uh, and it did. This is the one we're gonna do next, the uh, astronaut on Mars. Uh, then I turned that image of the astronaut on Mars into a Pixar character right here. Uh, this is one of the Mandalorian. Uh, this is a photo of me. It didn't do a very good job. It turned, uh, I wanted, to, wanted it to turn me into a Pixar character. Uh, and uh, it did, I thought it kind of failed. I don't know. Maybe you disagree, uh, but I don't think I look much like this dude here, um, but it did a, a very interesting job. I would probably give it a few cracks at it, and I'd probably train it first uh, before it uh, generated that uh, uh, image. So um, uh, over here on the left-hand side, it gives you this model. Uh, it starts with kind of, the, you know, a real kind of prime uh, look, you know, something you would get out of mid-journey. It's got anime. Uh, then you can select the different uh, uh, types of styles you want down here, and it's going to be adding more all the time, uh, you know, so you can uh, take and do it in, in uh, several different types of, of formats, you know, vintage comic book, anime type things, you know, Pixar, of course. Um, so I can take here, take my, uh, I'm going to select real prime, uh, and I'll do an aspect ratio. I'll do, a, a you know, uh, maybe a four to three or something like that. Um, number of images, I'm going to trim it down to just two. Um, uh, and then it's got a text guidance scale, you know, how much do, do, does it, uh, uh, I usually set it right here in, in the moderate uh, area here. Um, and it, uh, your uh, text goes right down here um, at the bottom. Uh, and this, you can upload an image as well, um, uh, that type of thing uh, right here. I had one that was already loaded um, and I can drop this in here too. And astronaut on Mars during sunset and I can go ahead and start my prompt. It generates them relatively quickly, depending on your uh, uh, depending on your uh, um, speed of your modem, uh, your uh, Wi-Fi modem. Uh, and you see it defaults here to nine sixteen. Then I can uh, once it creates, I can uh, modify it and move it to these other ones. Uh, it doesn't allow you to preset it. It, it defaults to the nine sixteen. Uh, it says it over here too. And then you know, once once I've created this, you know, and I've got some pretty good results here. You know, then I can go and start changing my aspect ratios and, and things like that. Um, I can go in here and and switch it over and uh, you know take a look if I wanted to switch it to Pixar style. I could do that. 
uh, and you can modify them. Easy download. Um, uh, you, you can just sit here and, and uh, download them like this and hit the little arrow down. Uh, it does drop a watermark in the lower right hand corner. This is, you know, the trade off for getting to use a free version of it. Um, you know, some people crop that out, but I would say, you know, you want to tell your reader that you're using uh, an AI tool for it, either leave the watermark on or put it in your, uh, uh, put it in your uh, uh, cut line. Um, I'll hit the, the start button again, and now we'll see how it does in Pixar style. Then we'll upload an image or two and see how it does. Um, I'll see if it can do a little better job with my photo this time. Uh, as well. But uh, it's a fun little tool to work with. Um, it, it's very WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. Uh, very clean interface. And like I say, this toolbar down the left-hand side is quite nice. It reminds me uh, a little bit of, of what Adobe has done with Firefly uh, with its tool on the right-hand side. Um, gives you a lot of options here. While that's percolating, um, I'll go up here and, and I'm going to grab this image of a car. Um, this is an uh, image I generated in uh, another uh, a Gen AI tools is of a BMW M340i, got the body style right. Um, and it's just kind of, uh, you know, uh, sliding across a surface here and, and burning some uh, some rubber. Uh, and uh, I'm going to upload it in here and ask it to change the color. As you see, we got our Pixar astronauts here. You know, it looks a little different, uh, you know, than uh, the, what we had uh, earlier. And you can keep changing these different styles to kind of see what you want. And if you want to program your, if you like, you know, this character here I have on the left of the Pixar, uh, you can uh, load that in and use that as a training uh, model, uh, you know, for your uh, future characters uh, and, and include that in there. So I'm going to upload the image now uh, and go and find that. This is a really nice little interface. This is a dark blue BMW I'm uploading. Uh, and then I'm going to tell it to change the color of the car in the attached photo. The space gray, which is another popular color for BMW cars. Um, it does uh, struggle sometimes with specific colors. It, it'll be a little off, or if there's a, a certain brand color, uh, you know, maybe a, a certain car color that's labeled as a certain, you know, candy apple red, like that. Uh, I've noticed a lot of the AI tools are still struggling. You know, if you say dark red or dark blue, it does, handles that pretty well, uh, but it's still struggling a bit with specific uh, colors, which I assume after they, they're they trained more and more, they, they'll uh, get a little better at that. But I've I've noticed that I've done, you know, a lot of car and, and uh, vehicle type uh, of images I've generated and, um I noticed it struggles uh, with that right now, but, you know, it gave me a pretty good one. Uh, kind of played with the body style here a little bit with it. This one's a little more uh, on the right is a little more accurate to the original image that I uploaded. Um, but, uh, you know, kind of kept the same format. It's kind of going across the same surface, but changed the color, added a little black in here on this one, uh, which actually looks, looks quite nice. So it does modify it a little bit. It doesn't always give you exactly what you asked for. Um, and, uh, you know, I gave it Pixar style too, so that might've, might've modified this one on the left a little bit. Um, so let's do one more. I'll do another Pixar, uh, and I'll, uh, upload, uh, that photo of myself. Um, got another one too, that we might have fun with here. I'm going to ask it to, uh, I'm going to actually include Pixar in here, even though I've got the Pixar style set. Um, you know, I have it create a Pixar image of the man in this photo. We'll see if it does a little better than the last one. Maybe a little gray on the sides there and uh, a little chunkier than I actually am. So we'll see if it does a little bit better this time. Um, and you can have a lot of fun with these too. This is an image uh, I created in Mid Journey. Um, uh, of Chewbacca partying at a Waffle House. You know, I had a little fun with it. Um, and you can turn him into a Pixar character. You can do things like that. And I blew it again. You know, we created the same guy, which is pretty interesting because it's not, tends to be not very consistent uh, in creating uh, uh, characters, uh, but it, it seems to seems to keep reading it uh, the same way. I put some funky, uh, I don't know, uh, button on me there. So uh, I don't know about that. I, it's gonna, I'm gonna need to practice with that a little bit. But that's some of the things you can do with LensGo. It's got all these great little filters that you can add to it. 
Uh, and it'll be growing in the coming months. You know, you can do a gaming scene, uh, you know, 20s horror, uh, you know, there's going to be all these others in here. So, uh, you know, take advantage of this free version and, and you can do some, some fantastic work with it. Again, it'd be good for animating maybe a magazine cover or uh, if you need to do some type of photo illustration to accompany maybe a digital piece or you need to work something into a, uh, a, a video or, or some type of documentary. As long as you identify these as photo illustrations, uh, and, and mentioned, you know, uh, that you created it with AI. I, I think that, uh, you know, uh, is, is the right thing to do is at least as far as the NPPA uh, code of ethics, you know, to tell the reader, hey, I created this with artificial uh, intelligence. Um, Latte Social uh, also creates uh, animations. Uh, you'll do text to full length video. Um, and uh, you can try it for free, which not what's really nice about this is it doesn't require a credit card. So they're not trying to bump you over into some paid version without you noticing. Uh, you can try it out for a little bit and then create uh, a, an account uh, with them, a full account. Uh, very simple interface here. Uh, you just write your prompt down here. Uh, the free version only allows you to do a 20 second uh, uh, video duration. Uh, the paid version allows you to, to do up to five minutes. You can load scripts in here. Uh, you can choose your aspect ratio. It only gives you three landscape square or, or portrait. Um, uh, you can also load audio in here and have it uh, create the image off of a pre-recorded audio or for you to speak it into the prompt. I, usually I just cut and paste a script or, a, uh, you know, write my prompt, which I've done over here. And we'll pull this out. And this is fighter jets uh, from the movie Top Gun flying low across the horizon, just meters above the ocean. Uh, they uh, fly low. Blue low. Let me fix this here. Blue low over landfall before cutting between two tall mountains just off the beachfront. The sun is low on the sky behind that. So you always want to make sure you fix up your typos uh, before you load it in there. So I'll drop this into latte. Okay. 20 seconds. You can pick a generation style. Um, you know, you can do animated, cinematic, anime. Uh, some of these are still developing. So, you know, maybe, maybe by the time you watch this video, it'll have more of a vector graphic uh, option, which will be fantastic for videos. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, cool prompts out there that you can create vector graphics with in mid journey. Uh, imagine being able to, you know, uh, just create a video using vector graphics here. It'd be fantastic. I'm going to pick the cinematic mode uh, and then hit generate. Uh, the one drawback to this tool um, it's, uh, uh, you know, uh, only 20 second video is reminding me here, um, upgrade to generate more videos, that type of thing. Uh, but it does take a long time to produce the video. Uh, so that does take some time. Um, uh, when it's done, it sends you a little email when you set up your account, um, you, you gave it an email, uh, and, uh, it sends you this little email and I'll show you the results of this. Um, and, uh, It'll uh, play here. I, I wasn't wild about the result, but it was it was okay. There are some things that it, it messes up. With the up. day's end drawing close, the light from a low-hung sun bathes the Top Gun fighters in a warm glow. Gracefully, they skim the ocean surface, rising in silent harmony over land. Between two imposing mountains, they speed an intoxicating dance of daring and precision. <laughs> Now, you know, it was this pretty campy uh, audio that it added in there. You load your own, own in. That's where that audio button uh, is from. So it'll load the audio. It'll develop the image and load that uh, script that you have in there uh, for it. Or you can load your own audio if you want just music or something like that. Uh, it does give you some controls. You can go back and do some editing on it from the duration, uh, add in subtitles, uh, all kinds of other things. Uh, you can also uh, give it some prompts uh, you know, for changes you wanted to make. Again, this is a very early version of this tool. I see it getting much, much better here in the coming weeks and months. Uh, but it's something that you definitely want to keep an eye on uh, because it, you know, it could develop into a really, really good tool for creating animations and and you know, quick little audio descriptions. Maybe you could take a story and do something with this and create a little social media video to accompany it like you do with VideoFi. Um, could be a really great resource for that. Um, so anyway, these take a long time to produce right now. Uh, the, the tool's getting a lot of traffic. Uh, again, your Wi-Fi, uh, it'll stop it and say, you know, uh, uh, you know, go do something else it'll tell you to do and then come back and check your email, you know, in uh, 20 minutes or so. It's what it took for this one to create. 
Uh, but again, I expect those speeds to pick up uh, the longer the tool's out and uh, you know, become much quicker um, with delivery. <clears throat> Google Research has been working on a tool called uh, VideoPoet. Uh, it's a large language model for zero shot uh, uh, video generation, basically writing te uh, text prompts uh, to create video animations, uh, much like the ones you see here. Um, again, uh, they haven't moved into uh, making this an available tool yet in late 2023, uh, but they do show some of the experimental uh, uh, prompts that they've used uh, and the results of those images, which have been, been uh, you know, quite nice here um, that you see. And, you know, they're just kind of messing around with some different animals and things like that. Um, but you can do some, some really cool things with this, you know, uh, uh, reenactments, things like that. Um, I see some value here with these types of tools. So again, uh, take advantage of these tools, uh, you know, play around with them, uh, yeah, experiment with them a little bit. I've got these prompts and uh, all the links to the tools on this handout on bit.ly slash lensgo training. Uh, and also uh, make sure you've, uh, you're you using uh, journalistoolbox.ai. Uh, again, it's a free tool uh, and you can uh, uh, go in there and find all kinds of new resources for you, data tools, um, uh, all kinds of stuff on writing and editing. Uh, how to write prompts, uh, productivity tools, also uh, issues with law and ethics with AI, which is a, a very big deal. Um, so keep an eye on this uh, site and uh, take advantage of it. We'll see you on the next training video. Take care.